Still to come, we've got our press preview, the morning papers. Nabila making some calculations, as well she might, <laughs> because we thought we were all going to be two billion better off in the autumn statement. However, the I and the independents say we're going to be 75 billion worse off, borrowing yet more. What's it all mean? We'll be trying to tell you in a moment. Our press preview coming up for you in just a moment, of course, all the morning papers. But first, our top stories tonight, and the Chancellor is to give the NHS more than £3 billion in extra funding, all part of his autumn statement on Wednesday. £1.1 billion is coming from uh, banking fines, which will be given to GP services. The chairman of the Commons Culture, Media and Sports Committee has the called World FIFA's Ice. World Cup bidding process deeply corrupt after fresh allegations in a document compiled by the England delegation. And police in Hong Kong have been using pepper spray and batons to try and clear pro-democracy demonstrators from the streets. Uh, about 40 arrests have been made so far. Uh, let's bring you the latest picture. This is the Admiralty area where, uh, as you can see, the main road into the financial district now occupied. Uh, it's the time of the morning when workers normally try to get to that financial district. Uh, police have been moving in, but as yet, no major uh, attempt to move these protesters. It seems we'll keep monitoring that position for you. But it is now time for all our papers in that press preview. Joining us tonight, broadcaster and classical music presenter Petra Trelawney and the writer and journalist Nabila Ramdani. Welcome to you both again. Uh, thanks for being with us. Front pages as ever, first of all the papers. Independent, reporting on a damaging blow to George Osborne, claiming the government will have to borrow £75 billion over the next five years, even though they found two billion down the back of the sofa somewhere. <laughs> Same story for the eye. While The Guardian says there's more bad news for the Chancellor, being revealed that a large chunk of the money he's promised to inject in the NHS will actually come from the Department of Health. Telegraph also reporting on announcements by the Chancellor, this time the billions earmarked for road improvements across uh, the UK. While the mail there, government failing to keep its promise of weekly bin collections, families waiting 12 days, it says on average, for their bins to be emptied. More than half the police and crime commissioners elected by the coalition have been investigated for alleged wrongdoing, reports the Times. FT goes with uh, the management firm PIMCO, uh, figures showing the company has to pay out $100 billion in redemptions this year. No, I don't understand that either. Uh, victims of the pension mis-selling scandal are set to receive part of an £8.5 billion payout, according to the Express. That's the mis-selling of uh, the wrong type of annuity. While the Metro says online shoppers are expected to spend yet more record-breaking amounts, uh, as if Black Friday wasn't enough, we've got Cyber Monday looming tomorrow. And the Mirror goes with a Tory MP voting for NHS privatisation, uh, who has a second job with a firm that's, yes, in the running for a private NHS contract. The Sun reporting on the whistleblower who exposed Andrew Mitchell Gates' role in Plebgate, who says he was arrested and humiliated by the Met Police bosses who tried to cover up the scandal, he claims. And the star has the latest on uh, a television programme. <laughs> Which, Starring yeah. Michael Burke, why? Well, yes, <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, get me out of here. Uh, or anywhere. Uh, Petrock and Nabila are taking us, I think, to um, lots of facts and figures. Mm. Um, on the autumn statement due on Wednesday, the Telegraph first, which is going on a 15 billion boost for... Well, it's not new roads, actually, it's the existing roads that need yeah. to get better. Yeah, these are roads like the A47, the A1, the A303, and they've rather sensibly broken this down into into a series of who gets what specific right. schemes they report um, beginning in Lib Dem MP Dan Rogers' seat in North Cornwall David Laws the schools minister in Yeovil ah. Nick Clegg will benefit so from therein lies the story maybe. Maybe. well right. I mean you know the, the shadow transport secretary uh, not surprisingly uh, says this is another desperate pre-election con a re-announcement of long promised but never delivered road improvements now clearly people uh, running businesses around the those roads or people who regularly use, I use the A303 whenever I go to Cornwall, it can be very frustrating. Clearly, it's going to be a great benefit to have, to have well, that, that road improved. Yes. But, but you, can't, you can't but see the cynicism I mean, sure, behind it. But after four years of austerity, you know, a lot of spending all of a sudden, mm. uh, a few months before, you know, people are expected to go to the poll. So I think it's, uh, 
it's specifically designed to, to send a, a positive messi message. Yes, yeah. yeah. However, I mean, I wonder what you and others would think of the description of what is going to be. Uh, the A303 should be a southwest superhighway. Uh, I can think a lot of people seeing yes. you know, the bucolic image of um, Stonehenge. Yes. I mean, they're talking about a tunnel, but you know, do they really want yeah. more actually, tarmac mm. across? And I have to say, yeah. one of the reasons I love the A303 is because it's not the exactly. M4, M5. Yeah. It's actually a lovely road to drive on. And, mm. you know, yes, it does get frustrating sometimes, but, you know, you're driving through charming villages, you can turn off and go to a country pub or have an ice cream on the side yeah. of the road, mm. which you can't do, of course, if it becomes a big, busy motorway. Yeah. But I think, you know, southwest businesses would certainly say uh, it's essential for, for the future. Just to get the, the, the country region, moving. To get the yeah. country yeah. moving. Yeah. You yeah. Know, can't be reliant on one road. Um, then we've got more uh, in the Independent and the Iron, which is giving another uh, take on the story. Let's just move the uh, Independent in first, if I can just select that, which is there. Osborne's 75 billion budget bombshell. Uh, and just to remind us how big that amount is, the I has it in very big red letters. Um, and this is the, the borrowing that will have to be done because our revenues, they say, are collapsing. Oil sales, stamp duty and income tax down. Mm. Well, while, you know, right-wing papers, if I may put it that way, are focusing on what Osborne, you know, is going to contribute towards the NHS, uh, the left-wing press uh, is more focused on, you know, the other side of the story and, and clearly what this implies in terms of, you know, actually we don't have that much money to spend mm. and, we, you know, it looks like uh, uh, Osborne will have to do some very clear on, explanation. On the never, never it? again. Yes. And it was the gamble that he took, wasn't it, that the economy would pick up. Well, that has absolutely happened, but the austerity has pulled down the amount of income the tax. The tax tax, yes. yeah. Paid, mm. The VAT uh, up to 20% has worked at one level but hasn't worked at another, so suddenly there's a lot more money to be found. And, you know, there are vast amounts of money that, yeah. you know, we could be in hot to by 2020. However, I mean, look, going back to the sort of concentration on health, it's uh, page two of the Express. I mean, it's indicating that the fines they got from the bankers, uh, as Labour said, should be sent and spent on well, something specific. Can I quote GP services? Can I quote Mesa Hall, who's uh -huh. the Express's political editor, who seems to... I mean, if this was not the Tory press release, <laughs> doctors will be able to provide cancer, chemotherapy and kidney dialysis on patients' doorsteps because banks were caught fiddling exchange rates. Well, he's on message, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Um, but isn't it that's what Labour asked for, isn't it? They wanted it, you know, to be earmarked for something specific. Yeah, so. and, and yeah, I mean some the, wrangling. It, well, exactly, and the point is that the Labour Party uh, has always seen itself as the, the party of the NHS and the Conservative seems to be stealing the thunder, mm. especially a few days before Labour is supposed to make a big statement on, on the NHS. But clearly the Conservatives are capitalising on such a popular issue which can clearly be th that they want to turn into an election winner. They know it's uh, something that uh, people are, are, you know, are very fond of. The NHS is one of the sacred cows. Yeah, in, in this and, and there is this, this growing conception, uh, perception that it is actually in crisis, even though you know, that might not be the case for every health trust or GP surgery. It's, it's the image yeah, that's being well, indicated. Well, absolutely, and that's the idea behind pumping yeah. you know, all those billions uh, to stave off a crisis, yeah. as it were, hoping that it will win the Conservatives the next general election. It's as if we're getting a sort of positive and negative, isn't it, in the run-up mm. to, to the election, I think, from both sides. The positive being health and the NHS, which you can win points on, the negative being immigration, immigration. about which, interestingly, there's very little in today's mm. papers, but, you know, clearly there was last week with, with, with Cameron's speech, etc. And, yeah. and they're kind of the issues that, you know, one, everyone but wants to talk about, the other, no one issues. wants to talk about. Yeah, mm -hmm. or very mm -hmm. contentious yeah. let's, issues, uh, let's just certainly. bring in the front page of the FT very quickly, because it's got that picture there of Hong Kong. China refuses MPs' entry to Hong Kong as pro-democracy clashes continue. There's more than that you've spotted inside the Times on page two, uh, which is uh, the views of the Foreign Affairs Committee um, who had been due to visit later this month, being told you're not welcome. And, of course, as we speak, uh, we've got this standoff. Uh, I think we may have the f live picture at the moment 
from the Admiralty District, which you know well, Petro, you actually worked there. Yeah, I did. I mean, I was at, in fact, my, my former office um, 20 years ago, and what was then the headquarters of British forces, is now the headquarters of the People's Liberation Army, is actually in one of the, well, not that shot, but another of the, the, the shots that we've seen. I mean, I think this is deeply shocking that China is saying British MPs are not allowed yeah. to go to Hong Kong. Um, I, I don't quite see on what basis they can ban them, except, I suppose, mm. as a courtesy, legislators legislators would ask for permission before going into another territory. The Times quote a senior banker based in Hong Kong saying that the snub sent a really pretty unsettling message about Beijing's preparedness to ditch the usual norms of intergovernmental mm. uh, uh, But they, uh, they won't want MPs heading down here talking to all these people and actually, uh, as, as Beijing would say, stirring the pot. Yeah, sure, but especially in a former British uh, colony. colony yeah. Yes, and, and I think, you know, the, the, but the so-called uh, umbrella movement is, is still, you know, uh, remains... Um, uh, is not making many concessions and uh, the Chinese government in its demands and the Chinese government is equally, you know, remaining uh, extremely reactionary. So there's a stalemate there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, and it, it, it seems, it, it seems you know, given that Hong Kong was promised that right to protest, free press, etc., it seems that, you know, actually stopping yeah. foreign MPs from going is an infringement of all yeah. those... All those well, we've also seen protests back on the streets of Cairo, of course. We've got page uh, 34 and then uh, 35... Uh, of the Times there with this uh, double page spread, the um, scenes just outside Tahrir Square, because I think they're not, still not allowed to get into Tahrir Square. Cairo and turmoil as Mubarak goes free. Um, and one does think, you know, where is this going to go next? Yeah, well, absolutely. We're talking about Chinese protesters who are yeah. relatively well behaved as opposed to, you know, the turmoil we've seen in the Arab world and and uh, and the, you know, the level of protest and the revolutionary fervor which we're still seeing in, in Egypt uh, four years, uh, uh, well, uh, after the, the beginning of the Arab Spring. And this is all to do, uh, almost four years, all to do with the the acquittal of former President uh, Mubarak, which was on the of murder course, charges, mu on murder charges, but also on corruption charges, um, and uh, this is effectively, you know, General Sisi, who's running the country, looking after its own. Yeah, former... and is, is, is that what's really riled them again? Is that they see the army's involvement, and particularly in maybe pressuring the judiciary over this decision? Well, there's a lot of questions about, of course, the independence of the judiciary, uh, which doesn't seem to be independent. Mm. Uh, General Sisi effectively uh, or orchestrated a military coup to remove a legitimate government, which was uh, led by President Mohamed Morsi of yeah, yeah. the Muslim Brotherhood, which whatever your views are on the Muslim Brotherhood, they were legitimate. They won the elections, uh, f the first free elections in the country uh, ever, actually. And they won them. They won them f fairly, yeah. and uh, you know, and squarely. And still and, a very uh, volatile atmosphere uh, in these um, coming days, one suspects. And it's it worth it's worth noting that you know, while Mubarak is, is acquitted, that the government have arrested forty thousand other protesters. Mm. Peter Grester, one of them, his forty ninth birthday today. Yes, and it, tomorrow. In yes, fact, the, the, the journalists who yeah, are, are still there, yeah, to, waiting uh, for. And in the wake of the military process. coup, they've assassinated uh, more than 1,400 uh, people. That's a lot of yeah. blood mm. spilled. OK, coming up, find out what's topping the list of most popular baby names and what says here dropping down. Telling you in a moment. Back to our press preview, more from the papers from Petrock and Nabila as we head for uh, The Times and... Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch there. We don't think he was up for anything at the Evening Standard Theatre Awards, but there with his fiancée, Sophie Hunter. Uh, but below that, you've got this private school confidence story, quotes, hurts society. It's yeah, a social this is, comment. This is interesting, <laughs> isn't it? It's a speech by the, the headmaster of the King's School in London, mm. a leading public school. And this actually ties in with, I think, the criticism of the old Etonians running parts of the Conservative Party, that well, they were sort of, you know, disconnected from yeah, the Yeah, the, the, of... the Times, don't, Times don't directly link it in this story, but, but what this guy is saying is that privately educated school pupils have, as he puts it, a bullish and charmless confidence that can asphyxiate the society they move in. And saying that, you know, whilst 
uh, uh, public school boys and girls are incredibly confident. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. it's not the best sort of yeah. confidence. Nick, he goes on to talk about how it can well repel. resourced, yeah, how it can yeah. repel, yeah. and also how well resourced public schools are. How mm. there's been a sort of race in terms of getting new theatres, new sports facilities, new music yeah. spaces, etc. And I, I think it raises an interesting point that you know, I went to a comprehensive school. Um, I was talking to friends the other day whose kids go to public school now. Lucky them, mm. and you know they clearly do have this extraordinary confidence yes. at the age mm. of 16, 17, 18 that I certainly didn't have. But when will I it be school. knocked mm. out of them when they have to get into well, Civvy Street? That may such, well, you know. that may well be true. But and you know, it's it, you can pay thirty-five thousand a year to send your kids to to a out top a public school. Income. Yeah, at a tax, at a taxed income. So I guess if you're a parent, you'd expect something back for that. But yeah. it, it yeah. clearly, you know, it clearly potentially is is an issue within society. I wouldn't go as far as using the word divisive, but it clearly is an issue within. within well, that's certainly a criticism that's often levelled at members of the, you know, government, uh, Labour and uh, Conservative, yes, as most yeah. of, of those who lead the country are, uh, you know, um, come from that kind of schooling yeah. and they're clearly, they, they clearly produce well-rounded individuals, but, uh, uh, you know, I think that's Some a, rather too rounded, yes. one might mm. say. Anyway, let's look at other matters you've spotted inside the pages. Page four of the mail, uh, which is a story about regional control. Now, And there's a picture of Eric Pickles. Yes, a, be what another well-rounded individual. <laughs> um, no, we, we shouldn't uh, be... Who uh, I think went to a state school. Is, uh, well, indeed. But we're talking about regions demanding the same powers as Scotland. I mean, could that really be tax-raising powers as well? Would they want that? Well, you know, I think uh, in the uh, during the the debate about Scotland's uh, independence, I think we've seen a lot of you know people, especially leaders of local communities, asking for you know their share of uh, regional powers and indeed a share of the Westminster Pie, as it were. Yeah. They want to be able to make their own decisions locally and not to have to rely on Westminster. And we were, we were talking about the A1. I mean, mm. that's a classic example, isn't it? Because that links Newcastle and Edinburgh, two cities which are, are relatively similar in size. Edinburgh will have far more control over spending uh, under this, these new mm. proposals for Scotland than Newcastle will. There's Newcastle City Council facing real fiscal problems, having to, to cut back on a huge number of services. The IPPR published yes. Research mm -hmm. last week, I think, saying that infrastructure spending in this country five thousand four hundred and twenty-six pounds per person in London, two hundred and twenty-three. So what's that? Five percent in the yeah. northeast. Yeah. And yet, so you, you can see why someone like that is, is going to say, "Well, hang Below on, a that, Manchester, they're, they're Leeds, following Bristol. up on, on their front page story about weekly bins, and maybe that really is what people want from their local authority: is for the local stuff to be handled. Uh, and uh, certainly, the indication. Uh, according to the Pew cartoon there, if we just move that across uh, underneath, uh, we've got the Christmas list. Scarf, socks, weekly bin collection. Yeah, but local <laughs> councils would say the reason they had to abandon weekly bin collections was because they didn't have the money to do it, because they yeah. didn't have control over their own budget. Well, I think, yeah. you know, I think it, there's, there's, no a... doubt, there's no doubt it is going to cause problems, isn't it? Giving Scotland more control is going mm. to leave the big regions, often bigger than Scotland, feeling very bruised and if they don't get control. And there's control. a certain level of resentment as well, with yeah. Scotland perceived as having more money. Anyway, than, let's finish uh, with the top yeah. ten, because number one now for boys, Mohammed. Uh, and an indication that other Arabic names are coming fast up the list for girls. Uh, could it be Nur and Mariam, is that right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm not terribly sure what this story tells us, um, aside from the fact that... Um, um, a change in the, the demographics of Britain, well, maybe. Probably, yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely. But also it says a lot about the, the relaxed atmosphere, perhaps, about... Uh, or certainly the more... Uh, yeah, relaxed atmospheres in the UK in relation to diversity issues and the level of tolerance yeah. as to... But should we, should we just spare a thought finally for the poor kids that have been named Wren, <laughs> London, <laughs> Genesis, <laughs> Blue, Hendrix, Braxton and Apollo. And George is off the list because of a certain prince. Oh well, why not? Anyway, thank you for your selection. <laughs> we'll see you again soon.